Welcome to the fifth and final installment of this particular series. Uh, the game is Clockwork Empires. Uh, we're playing through version 39, the most recent stable build. My name is Alfred. I do these approximately once a month when these things go live. Um, yeah, in this episode we're going to see the effects of Sulfur Tonic and Moonshine. And we're going to take a look at the, uh, the way personalities affect or the way memories affect personalities. Some pretty cool stuff. Anyway, so we're gonna start producing... Oh, we've, we've actually made some sulfur tonic. I wonder which stockpile it goes into. Is it considered food? I didn't spot it with my beady little eyes. What I'd like to do is find someone drinking it, so I can see what effect it has on their memories. All right, we're going to, uh, Eunice is going to, Eunice is lugging some sulfur into the workshop because she's going to make some sulfur tonic. So we'll follow her around, and then we'll see where she puts the tonic. In the meantime, let's uh, take a look at Eunice Mine Widow. She was a uh, former criminal who traveled to the colonies. Now she's fearful. Although she is, she's still stout of heart, and her sanity is slipping just a little bit. She hasn't slept in two days. That's not good. And she keeps on running into Fishman, and she's unhappy about being here. Well, I guess everyone does the best they can, right? At least there's plenty of food. I guess what it says, I need more beds in the colony. Oh, Eunice herself has drunk in the bottle. And, and you can see there's a change in her personality. Um, it reordered some of her memories, and I think it erased some of the unhappy ones. Like, she had a memory about being hungry, right? Which, uh, which is erased. So, uh, I, th I guess on balance, more of her memories are happy, or more of her remaining memories are pleasant ones. So, Sulfur Tonic's not a cure-all, but I mean, it'll help. And we've still got Elsa Ironworth starving in the furniture. I think she's stuck in this module. Um, I'm going to wait until the module's completed, and then I'm going to physically move the module, which should free her. Which should, in turn, allow her to walk over to get some food. Actually, now that these are built, I can start building the metalworks. Wait a second. See at the bottom here? Meriwether Breeson Pater has made the sad decision to leave the holders of the builders, which, as you'll recall, was um, Achilles Tomplock's cult. Actually, I really want to find um, Meriwether Breeson Pater. So at some point, Achilles actually invited her to join his cult, and she accepted. However, the curative power of Sulfur Tonic made her sane enough to leave <laughs> to leave a cult. Um, so let's find this guy. Given that he's standing in the stockpile, I gather he is just drunken. A Sulfur Tonic. Let's follow him around for a little bit. Ah, here he is. So he was happy, briefly, because uh, he joined a cult. However, uh, once he drank that Sulfur Tonic, he lost faith in the cult. And although he's no longer a cultist, he feels only emptiness now. I'm not sure if that's a, <laughs> if that's a net gain. At least he's not a murderous cultist. Ah, fish people are destroying my freaking crops. What have you got against bamboo? Go away! So you see these guys, these angry colonists here? They're shooing the fishmen away from my crops. 
I'm willing to tolerate a little bit of vandalism because I again I don't want a three-sided war and you know the damage they do isn't too bad but if I was on the point of starvation um, I might be a little more aggressive about dissuading fishmen from uh, damaging my crops okay so the brewery is complete the current modules are in place so I'm gonna move you Oh, this is new, by the way. Now when you click on a place module, you have the option to... Oh, you always had the option to dis, dis, uh, disassemble it or move it, but now it's explicitly one of these two buttons, which is nice. I want to move this module. Let's move it over here. I said move it over here. There we go. And we'll unpause the game. And I think that means Elsa... Ironworth is no longer... Well, that was weird. Uh, no longer stuck in the geometry. Yes, that's... Um, now's a good time to remind people Clockwork Empires is in early access and there's all sorts of um, bugs and uh, things to be fixed. So, you know, this sort of thing is to be expected. Wow, she was super hungry. She just ate two giant steaks. Three giant steaks. It's like uh, four giant steaks. Is this a bug? It's like the opening of the Flintstones, where you know Fred Flintstone takes his family to the drive-in and they get the giant rack of brontosaurus ribs that tips their car over. Well, I hope you're happy, Elsa Ironworth. You just ate enough steaks for four grown men. Uh, as I was saying, I can now begin bring chicha, because I've got corn. I would like to make moonshine, but that requires metal parts I don't have yet, and requires chicha. So, let's say brewery, I want a standing order, keep 10 bottles of chicha in store, in stock, in your inventory at all times. And of course I've got to assign a, uh, a work crew here. Let me just check what's going on here. Yep, this seems fine. Now, Mrs. Mr. Tomps, Just Beans have been assigned to the uh, brewery. He, any crew that is assigned, newly assigned to a workshop, uh, has their filters changed to, uh, if we can see up here, to Everett Steam's crew, and they work in the lab. The, the lab? I have a lab? I guess uh, that's what they call the chemist. They've, they've Confusingly, they've named the chemist shop the Fond Laboratory, which is going to be extra confusing when I build an extra laboratory. Uh, anyway, if we look at the filters, when a crew first gets assigned there, their filters flip over to uh, disabling every other job so they work only in that workshop. I've personally found that it's okay um, for workers to continue doing spontaneous jobs as they uh, become necessary. Especially for workshops that don't see a lot of use, like the chemist shop will only be used occasionally. So it's okay for the guys who work there to be doing other stuff because I'll only, only occasionally need their services. So I've started brewing uh, chicha, or booze, and I've got sulfur tonic. Actually, I believe I've, let's make some more. I think it would, did my colony some good. Uh, yeah, and uh, maybe we'll wait for the metal... I think I'll build a metal works, and then I can start building the parts I need for a distillery, and then I can make whiskey. And after I make whiskey, then I'll be able to make laudanum. And hopefully booze, drugs, and uh, food will keep my colonists sane. So, while the autosave... Uh, I've got a suspicious goods event, uh, but I, that'll resolve after the autosave completes. So we return. The suspicious goods uh, event is firing off. 
I have the option to accept some goods that mysteriously fell off the back of an airship if I don't ask questions. I'm actually going to refuse the goods. Um, basically what happens, I, as demonstrated earlier in this playthrough, when I accepted the suspicious goods, one of my colonists uh, noticed an accounting error and that led to a, a you know, a, I'm, I'm just going to refuse. The So I believe it was uh, Achilles Tomflock actually who went insane. He noticed the accounting error which fired off a long sequence of choice choices uh, which eventually resulted in like conflict and possible loss of prestige. And um, let's take a look at this. Don't want to accept any more colonists. So I'm going to take building materials. Maybe I'll have enough building materials to build a still. Yeah, I believe it was episode one or episode two, where the consequences of my res um, accepting contraband goods caused a great deal of unrest in the colony. And frankly, I don't, I don't need that stuff. I'm producing goods, and actually I just got a shipment of goods. Let's see, I still need a brick, iron sheet, copper sheet, copper pipes. Yeah, okay, I think I've got enough for one still. And we'll build it here. Just thought I'd check in on our good friend Achilles Tomplock here. Now, while I've had no complaints about the uh, production of planks at the carpentry, I am a little bit concerned about his persistent men uh, mental state. Now, I, we already know that he's uh, he had some success in starting a cult. Um, if we take a look at this, however, one of his most recent memories is about talking about the strange allure of the sea, and he has a new personality trait, or maybe I didn't notice this earlier, he has the fishy behavior trait? What? Uh, what? How did that happen? He saw an occult ritual? When was that? Now, uh, obviously I, I don't think you're meant to keep a, keep an eye on all this. I mean, with approximately 50 colonists or maybe more if you've played longer, you can't possibly be keeping track of all of them. It's like watching an ant colony, right? But, what I suspect this means is uh, that Achilles is prone to uh, cultish behavior, and uh, he may suffer the fish, the, the mythical fishman transformation, or he he might be more susceptible to it. Um, so, as we can see, his personality and his tendencies are all shaped by his memories. Right, every single one of these guys has their own personalities based on their own experiences and uh, their experiences of interacting with each other and their environment. Um, but for now, he's just doing woodworking stuff. So all is good. You know, that's cool, Achilles. Just, you know, I'm keeping my eye on you. You, you keep working on that door. So we return to the colony, it's now day 22. Um, Alfred Tomp is gingerly carrying the colony's first bottle of moonshine. Yes, moonshine, which is distilled out of chicha, which is not the way moonshine works in real life, I don't think. Uh, but we've come a long way. We now have high, high strength booze. Let's see how long it lasts. Got a lot of guys named Alfred in the colony. I approve. Oh, oh, is one of you thirsty laborers going to... Uh, okay. Sadie's quite happy. 
Ah, uh, so close. Orville drank the chicha instead of the moonshine. Maybe Enola? Enola Meathook after the thirsty work? No? The tempting moonshine. Well, alright, I guess we don't really need to watch the bottle of moonshine too carefully. But, um, generally speaking, I think uh, we've gone as far with this colony as we can be reasonably expected to advance in in uh, the current with the current progress of the game. Oh, wait, what's this? Leola Walker has discovered some overlooked supplies. Leola Walker has discovered a number of supplies that were overlooked in the last audit. And if we look on the bottom right, it consists of iron plates, brass clogs, copper pipes, glass panes, bolt of cloth. It's quite a lot of stuff, actually. I'm just keeping an eye on this bottle of moonshine because I want to watch the personality uh, of someone who drinks it. Um, it's supposed to erase a lot of memories. Uh, but yeah, so while we wait, and there's a death worm up attacking in the top right there. So I think the colony's progressed as far as we can take it. I mean, we've got the metalworks up and running. Uh, we have tons and tons of raw ores ready for refinement. Is he? Nope. Uh, he's a cook coming in for a shipment of uh, coconuts. Uh, yes. We've got the ceramics workshop, which will build glass or make glass and bricks for us. We've got the textile mill, which will make bolts of cloth out of our many um, our stores of uh, oops. Our stores of flax straw. Uh, so we've got, um, and then our kitchen. I ex I only built it with two stoves, but I've actually expanded it to five. So the kitchen's throughput is quite good. We've got the chapel, which influences uh, the personalities of those who are spiritually inclined, makes them happier with their lot in life. Uh, again, I've got the chemist shop producing sulfur tonic. Don't quite have enough of the resources together to build, uh, build, to brew laudanum. But sulfur tonic is also contributing to the mental well-being of the colony. Um, here I've got uh, just a bunkhouse for people to sleep in. Over here I've got the carpentry, which is producing all the logs I need. The bamboo stand is producing, we can see here, I've got bamboo poles in storage which means I don't need to be actively cutting down trees anymore. I've got mine, the mine, producing all of these tons of raw materials, ores and things. And I've got the brewery producing both chicha and moonshine, which means uh, I'm, producing, I'm producing enough chicha so that it's not all consumed at once. I've even got enough left over to further distill into moonshine. Uh, yeah, so things are going quite well with the colony. It's, um... So I think I'll be wrapping this one up here. Uh, now we've had a sneak peek at the next experimental revision. That'll be 39A. Um, and from screenshots and hints from the devs, this will, uh... Why does no one want to drink this moonshine? It's, it's good stuff. Uh, 39A will introduce opposing factions, which is uh, quite cool. I'll just take materials. Uh, so, the premise of Clockwork Empires is that by default your faction is the the Cog Empire, which is a very loose uh, analog of Victorian Britain. But we've uh, the game lore already has references to Moonshine. Moonshine, hang on. All right, before she drinks this moonshine, Elsa Ironworth's personality is she's angry, she's shaken, but she's not insane. She's, she's of sound mind. Now she has memories of being hungry and of being hurt and of being tired. Now let's watch what happens when she drinks a bottle of moonshine. So, we can see, um, 
her memories have been edited. So yeah, there you go. That's what Moonshine does for you. It's similar to uh, Self-Retonic. And um, it's kind of hard to see whether the net effect was that she's a happier or more content citizen. But by and large, uh, I, I, given how difficult it is, um, I'd say it's, it's, it's not bad. It, at least it'll help keep your colonists sane. Uh, yes, yeah, so what I was saying about 39A. 39A and moving forward, we're going to have uh, opposing uh, or outside national forces. We've got the, uh, the Novorus, who are the, uh, I believe, the Ruffalcoon of either Prussia or Russia, and uh, probably Russia, now that I think about it. And also the Mecha Republic, which is the very rough equivalent of France. Uh, yeah, so I'm very excited to see that stuff. That stuff is coming up uh, reportedly in the next experimental revision, which is, uh, I imagine, will be published to, to the experimental branch in uh, a week, if that. Uh, but who, experimental branches just come when they're ready. Any, anyway, that stuff is very cool. I will definitely be... Uh, I'll try and get a video together on that occasion. Uh, otherwise, I mean, here's our cool colony, all functional. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks very much for watching this playthrough. This is Clockwork Empires. We're up to version 39 now. My name is Alfred. I do these about once a month when a new revision hits the stable branch. Now, Clockwork Empires is in early access. It's not done. Things are changing all the time. Um, if you're interested in the early access uh, process, it's a really fascinating time to be involved. You can be active on the forums and on there, there's a Steam discussion pages. Uh, otherwise, well, thanks very much for your interest, and uh, I'll see you next month, probably.